It's now time for member statements. Member statements, the member for Toronto, St. Paul. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Um, I would like to introduce Durba Mukherjee to the House. Durba, thank you for being here today. I deeply wish your first visit to these chambers were under different circumstances. Mr. Speaker, Durba is one of my constituents. She is the mother of Arka, a 12-year-old boy who was also one of our constituents. Arka was a student at Hodgson Middle School, just outside of my riding, and he was a permanent resident of Canada, having moved here from India with his single-parent mom, Durba, on March 8th. 2018 International Women's Day, a day when we ironically acknowledge the strength and courage of women. Mr. Speaker, I cannot think of a stronger, more courageous woman than Durba. She has bared the unthinkable. Arka isn't with us today, Mr. Speaker, because he reportedly committed suicide on Friday, June 21st, 2019. In the words of Arka, in the word of Arka's mother, Durba, Arka in the last year of his life was bullied over and over again in school because of his circumstances and his background. I came here for my son to have a chance to grow up in a more open and tolerant society. Mr. Speaker, as one who was bullied mercilessly in school, I still have the privilege of standing here. Arka will never. Arka was a young boy who thrived at literature, at LitWiz, a program in his school, and he wanted to be like his favorite teacher, Mr. H. He'll never get that chance. Mr. Speaker, Durba is determined to ensure an end to bullying. For all students on and off of school property, I stand with her unapologetically. As legislators, we must ensure our schools and our school communities have every single equitable resource and dollar they need to ensure, ensure our children are safe, supported, and well in our schools. Ms. Merkaji Arka will never be forgotten. None of us here will ever be forgotten, and we will work hard to instill his legacy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. <coughs> member statements. Member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you. I rise here today to thank all the organizers, sponsors, and especially the amazing volunteers who worked together so we could all enjoy our local parades, festivals, and celebrations all summer long in Mississauga Lakeshore. On June 14th, we kicked off the season at the 23rd annual Mississauga Waterfront Festival, which included live music, entertainment for the whole family. The Canada Day Parade in Port Credit was a fantastic su success at, as thousands gathered along Lakeshore for an annual Paint the Town Red Parade. Johnny Bozo, Street Size Cake, and the beautiful fireworks display. On June thir July 13, thousands more gathered along the shores of the Credit River for Mississauga Rib Fest. On, June, on July 23, 21st, my team hosted their first annual barbecue at the Port Credit Memorial Park. Hundreds came out to enjoy that evening. On August 16, the Port Credit BIA hosted Busker Fest with performers and circus acts from all around the world. The Lakefront Festival season ended on September the 8th with the Southside Shuffle Blue Jazz Festival. I was proud to announce over $100,000 in grants to support these festivals. At each event, I was reminded how lucky I am to live in an amazing community with thousands of hardworking and dedicated volunteers. We had a tremendous summer in Mississauga Lakeshore, and they made it all possible. So once again, I'd like to thank everybody. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This November marks 35 years since the 1984 Sikh genocide when the government of India launched a horrendous campaign that initiated systemic and cruel human rights abuses against Sikhs in Delhi and throughout India. This heinous act aimed to eliminate an entire population of Sikh people. Genocide has touched the lives of many communities and families and, and is also including survivors and descendants of this genocide now living in Canada. They are an important part of our community, not only in Brampton, but also across the entire province. 
November is also a time of deep reflection for Sikhs around the world. We mark this solemn occasion when so many were unjustly killed just for practicing their faith. In 2017, in an amazing act of unity, all parties came together in this assembly to recognize the horrific acts of 1984 as a genocide. A moment of silence was held yesterday here at Queen's Park, as well as a candlelight vigil to remember the thousands of lives lost. I was proud to stand in solidarity with my fellow Brampton NDP MPPs and the entire Sikh community. We remember the suffering of the Sikh people in hopes that it will help provide a way of them for them to find healing and closure. Despite the trauma they experienced, the Sikh community continues to demonstrate its resilience all across the world. They have turned the injustices they face into advocacy for peace and social justice. Member statements, the member for Scarborough Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm so pleased to rise and recognize the 21st anniversary of the Hellenic Home for the Aged, a long-term care home in my riding of Scarborough Centre. The Hellenic Home is a not-for-profit organization that is dedicated to providing exceptional quality care and service to seniors in the Scarborough community that enhance their physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. By staying at the forefront of the community's ever-changing needs, their service is second to none. Seniors at the Hellenic Home live in a nurturing environment that respects, enhances, and promotes their dignity, independence, and happiness. The home also offers a unique cultural setting, one that is proud to recognize the customs and traditions of residents who are of a predominantly Greek ethnic background, but with a long-standing commitment to provide for the needs of individuals from diverse backgrounds. The work that the Hellenic Home does to provide a strong sense of community and family cannot be praised enough. And thankfully, this, earlier this year, the Ministry of Long-Term Care announced that the home was approved for 128 new long-term care beds. When speaking with staff and residents alike, I have heard firsthand how exciting this news is for the home. To them, it means that their family can grow, and this is a beautiful thing. I look forward to continuing to help the Hellenic Home and their residents grow and thrive, and I really look forward to celebrating 21 years of community, safety, and respect with all of the residents and staff this Saturday evening at their celebration gala. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise in the House to brag about the riding of Sudbury. Today, I'm going to brag about Laurentian University, my alma mater, because this spring, Laurentian became the first university in Ontario, the first, to reinstate full tuition exemption for students who are in extended care of the Children's Aid Society of Ontario. So many of the people would know that as foster care. And as you know, Speaker, the Conservative government steep cuts to OSAP last year. They ripped away support for students. And without those grants and the financial assistance, already difficult prospect of pursuing post-secondary education becomes even more difficult for former youth and care Ontarians. However, Speaker, last year I met with Jane Kovrakova at Queen's Park, and Jane was someone who was a former youth and care Ontarian. She was someone who graduated from Lynch University, someone who is currently pursuing her doctorate, but somebody who remembered her education struggles as a former youth in care. And Jane was someone who believed it didn't have to be that way. So, Speaker, Jane founded the Children and Welfare Political Action Committee, and she spoke about the untapped potential and how important education is to financial success and how their success becomes Ontario's success. And this resonated with me, so I invited Jane to Sudbury and I facilitated meetings between Jane and Laurentian University. And I am thrilled to share, Speaker, that this summer, my university, Laurentian University, announced it will be waiving tuition to 10 former youth and care Ontarians, no age restrictions, no course restrictions, and I am so proud to have been part of this process. I want to thank Jane for knowing it didn't have to be that way and finding the courage to change it, and I'm especially proud of Sudbury's Laurentian University for leading the way for being Ontario's first university to reinstate full tuition exemptions for students from the Extended Care of Children's Aid Society of Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. Good job, Jim. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Guelph. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to say that class size ratios matter, and I'd like to share the story of a young leader from my riding that highlights why. When Ben was 16, he was struggling in school, showing up late and barely passing. His home situation was difficult, and he lacked parental support. 
He wanted to go to university but never felt it was an option for him until a teacher invited Ben to join a green industries tech class sponsored by the charity Youth Fusion and facilitated by the University of Guelph students. The class project was to use environmental design to improve the school grounds. With the support of teachers, community mentors, Youth Fusion began to help Ben believe in his ability to succeed. He made honor roll, graduated as an Ontario scholar, and is currently a second-year student at the University of Guelph. Today, Ben works for Youth Fusion, facilitating classes at his old high school. Ben's story illustrates the importance of specialized education programs and the great work that Youth Fusion does for at-risk students. It also highlights why lower class ratios make a difference in students' lives. So I want to thank you, Ben, and I want to thank you, Youth Fusion, for the great work you do in our community. Thank you very much. The next statement is the member for Markham Thornhill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On November 4th, I hosted a roundtable on mental health and addiction with wonderful Minister, Associate Minister Tibolo in my riding of Mark and Thornhill. Mental health and addiction is on the rise. It is becoming an epidemic. That is why we need to reduce the barriers affecting people's ability to receive and seek help. Supporting frontline professionals who work incredibly hard to help those in need must be priority. Let's find the way to reduce the red tape and help them do their job more effectively. We are fortunate to hear from social organizations such as JVS, SSN, Jalobri Cows, Vita Nova Foundation, and 360 Kids. Each provided a unique perspective. Mr. Speaker, one stakeholder told us it took her six years to receive a proper diagnosis. Another one told us how her son suffering from a serious mental illness has to wait months to seek psychiatrist. Mr. Speaker, this is but a small example of the thousands of people struggling every day in Ontario. We must also recognize the unique challenges that stigma, cultural, and language barriers pose to diverse communities like my riding of Mark and Thornhill. We cannot have a one-size-fits-all solution. Mr. Speaker, we must work with our community partners and those who are on the front line to create a better quality of life for Ontarians suffering with the mental health and addiction. Thank you. Member for London, Fanshawe. Speaker, last month I was contacted by an educational assistant in the riding of, my, in the riding of London, Fanshawe. She told me about how things have changed, that work is more difficult and dangerous, unfair compensation and lack of supports for her and her colleagues. Educational workers are an integral part of our education system. Thousands of children rely on REAs to attend school. School boards rely on EAs expertise and behavioral management system to keep our, our students safe. EAs are front line, are front lines ensuring our kids have the opportunity to learn and supporting the success of high need students. These frontline workers deserve respect and they deserve compensation relative to the contributions they provide. Bill 124 sends a message that these contributions don't matter, that these workers who provide the best service they can to our community don't deserve fair treatment. This educational assistant, along with hundreds of thousands of other public service workers, deserve a government that supports hard work they do every day to ensure our children receive a safe and great education. Patients get great care, and Ontarians have a public sector that they can rely on. We know that Wage restraint legislation doesn't work. My constituent knows that her wages do not reflect the level of responsibility and the importance of her work. And now through Bill 124, the Premier is trying to squeeze more from workers who have already given so much. We need to show our public workers that we value them. The Ford government needs to scrap Bill 124, invest in our public sector, and invest in the people that work so hard to serve Ontarians. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, can you imagine around half of all women in Canada have experienced an incident of physical or sexual violence since the age of 16? 
That's one in every two women in Canada over the age of 16. And it is very unfortunate that women abuse is an issue that still exists in our society. The month of November is Women Abuse Prevention Month. Every woman should be free from the threat of violence and live with peace of mind. While there has been progress, but more need to be done. We have recently seen the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, being criticized for making choices not in line with the royal protocol and the public perception. Prince Harry stepped up to defend his wife and even considered leaving the royal family status to support his wife. Mr. Speaker, this is a great example of a husband, a man standing up, up to defend his wife for something she did not deserve. We all need to do our part. Ms. Speaker, in my writing of Mississauga Malton, a non-for-profit organization, Malton Women Council is working with a vision of empowered women, empowered communities. I like to recognize this organization for providing opportunities and resources for motivating, mentoring, and mobilizing women, families, and communities. I'd like to congratulate the founders, Aloka Mandiratta, Anurandhava, Gulnaj Rehan, Samina Khan, Hafsa, Parminder Randhawa, Mavish Javed, and Mohini Khosla for completing 10 years of their service. Finally, Mr. Speaker, I'm hoping for the day when November will be designated not as the month for women abuse awareness, but month for celebrating no women abuse and celebration of quality among all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member for Whitby. Hey, Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. I stand today to speak about the great work being done by the Canadian Cancer Survivor Network. The network provides those faced with a cancer diagnosis and to their family members and friends educational tools and a place to have their voices heard in planning and implementing treatment. It's a collaborative effort, Speaker, involving a range of community partners, all working together to promote the very best standard of care and support. This morning, I had the honour of sponsoring the Canadian Cancer Survivor Network at its uh, breakfast reception here at Queen's Park. Speaker, I spoke about the Cancer Treatment Centre at Lake Ridge Health in Oshawa, one of the very best in Ontario. And I spoke about the support given by Hearth Place in Oshawa to me and to so many others like me, Speaker, who are faced with a cancer diagnosis. I'm a cancer survivor, Speaker, and as reluctant as I was and am to speak about it, I did so today to emphasize the importance of the Canadian Cancer Survivor Network to the lives of so many thousands of people across Ontario. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this afternoon.